Hey, Tudor. Hello. Hey. Welcome to the Behind the Man series. I'm so happy to have you here today. How are you doing, my man? Man, doing really good. Really excited for the last three months of this year and really excited to, to get this call started and um, see what cool things you might uncover. So let's Great begin. Stuff. Great yeah. stuff. So we've already talked uh, at length at this point. We've already had a couple talks before. Uh, and I'm really just happy to build a little bit onto that and just start out with um, both of us got to meet each other in the Transformation Mastery Certification Program, uh, yep. Transformation Mastery Live Certification Program, and you were actually the first person I talked to there, right? Yeah, I uh, didn't told you that. You're my first too, like the first yeah. person. <laughs> Oh my God, we're each other first. That's, that's okay, so great. That, that's something. Yeah. yeah it's like I mean, when you're in high school, that you make your first friend. Yeah. <laughs> it was kind of like that in us. Yeah. Okay. It's 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 really just like that. So we're we're the first buddies here. Awesome. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, my first buddy, what I really wanted to ask you is, what was like your biggest takeaway until now from the whole certification program? What is like the thing that you were of uh, the the thing that really 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 the, the thing was that man look at these guys they're just like me and uh, it's crazy to finally be okay to be more like me that that's the biggest one like because all of us we, we are striving to to help others to coach others to trigger others i mean people are basically gonna pay us to trigger them and bring stuff up and I always had that from a young age and it was always like you know nobody was doing that and it's like you know it's it's pretty cool that I can allow myself to be more like me and uh, regarding the training it's really impressive how well put together everything is and uh, the the roadmap we have we have everything it's like no excuses so that's that's another awesome so yeah, but you want only one. So the, the yeah, biggest one was like, we start? Oh, yeah, the, the <laughs> moment is like, look at, look, Nana, it's like me, everybody's like, yeah, it's it's okay to just relax and, and, and be okay. Like being a coach and, you know, helping people with this thing. It's still really new, right? Transformation and self development and happiness coaching. Like it really is like just the beginnings like of this movement that is happening as you saw everywhere like oh, these types of videos blow up is definitely like a demand like people are getting things in life they're not happy with them and they realize there's something more to life and it, it, there is value in this self-development stuff not only for entrepreneurs or um, high achievers or athletes but just for your average person to just better themselves. Awesome, great stuff. I think I finally was ripe, you know, to to go into this field. I knew for ten years. I just posted something in in the group uh, that my mentor sent me two days ago about my younger me just writing to my best friends and and family um, what I wanted to do in life, and it, it was just uh, amazing to read it back to me. First, I was like. Great! oh my god what's what's this guy doing uh, and uh, but then i was like he knows what he's doing like this is the way that he wanted to go and it was exactly like i described it almost exactly but i just made like this huge piece of um challenging myself up to a certain point where i finally have it kind of figured out for myself like what i had um needed the, the the tool set that was needed just to tackle it all to master it everything so to speak and now i feel finally ready to go out and bring it on to other people H how is that for you yeah I, it, it was kind of, it's like a metaphor right like like you you had the willingness and some skills and a ball to play and now you have a courtyard <laughs> to play on <laughs> so it's pretty nice um yeah, the, the also cringe. Cringe is the new cool. Like, I, right? If you think about it, like, like ah, oh, don't be awkward, don't be weird, don't be cringe, don't say that, say this. Like, even like to the two guys, like uh, speaking about emotions, it's like you know, it's pretty cool how how the world is is kind of like opening up to 
to this type of stuff. Because uh, a lot of it, like, you know, running away from stuff, it's, um, yeah, it's, yeah, I got brain, brain, my brain just thought, like, like, it's, it's enough, don't say anything. <laughs> Do you get that? Like, sometimes you, you kind of, and your brain just says, like, like, just stop, like, whatever, don't, it's, that, that idea is long gone. <laughs> So, no, no, yeah, no. I, I'm not sure I answered the question. I don't even remember the question <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, the, the, the question would be, how was it for you? Like, how did you move? How I experienced it? Or this, this coaching thing? Oh, how I, okay, okay, I got it. Well, uh, you know, I was more into the entrepreneurship, like building my businesses and, and trying stuff. I haven't built a big one or a successful one. I, I you know, I'm learning stuff. But I, uh, I, I took uh, the Transformation Mastery course in 2019. And, uh, you know, I got my value, my benefits out of it, all that. And I kind of forgot about it. I, no, actually, back then, actually, some a person paid me to train them as well into entrepreneurship to helping them with mental blockages. So I kind of used what I've learned from Transformation Mastery with this guy. He got some good results, all that. And then uh, last year I did uh, coaching for programming, help developers become better developers, be better at programming, but I actually coach them to be better at communicating, right? To going out there at companies and getting jobs, all that. And I've then got a lot of success and actually train them more on the development side, also show them how to code and stuff. But then uh, this year I, I, I saw the email I got, like like Julian's wanting to franchise, sort of, like it's not the good word, but kind of like wants to have ambassadors, wants others to train. And uh, I was at the Wim Hof event where a, a certified instructor uh, taught us how to do the ice baths, all that. Anyway, I, I just my petty me. I was thinking, man, this guy sucks. Like I can do better. Than him. Like <laughs> I, I, I just want to be honest. But no, yeah. the guy is super awesome. Like the event was awesome. But I was thinking, at least I was thinking, man, I can do this, and this looks fun. And then I saw Julian do that, and I'm more connected to Julian's trainings because he really helped me out. And it kind of my my life story is kind of like that. Like uh, trying to get wealth, success, all that. Uh, you know, I didn't, I, I, like, like I know a lot of people say, but yeah, but you didn't got a Lamborghini and you, you're not successful. Well, I am a lot farther than when I started just to realize that external things didn't make me happy. So I, I guess that's a big thing that I, I realized, like you, you don't need to go as high, like just getting a bit higher to realize that the external stuff won't make you ha as happy as as you thought, right? And because uh, a lot of people have that excuse, like, well, yeah, I mean, I have a BMW, it's cool, but, you know, it's, it's not a Ferrari. So, you know, it's not me to say that money doesn't bring you happiness. Well, no, it's it's you, like, you, you can say that, like, if you started from nothing and you hustled your way and congratulations, you get that BMW or what amount of success, it doesn't need to be huge. You don't need to be Elon Musk to realize that. There's also another part to, you know, to to actually develop yourself in a sense that find some some things that you need to heal and to now start enjoying the things you are able to obtain as an adult, I guess. So I'm the thing I'm excited is like making self development more 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 for everybody, like for the average person. Like for instance, my parents will never do this, or my. Um, or some of my old friends, like they, they think, OK, I'm going to the job, I'm going to the factory. This is not for me. Like these are the executives that are doing it, the entrepreneurs, the athletes, the musicians, the blah, 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 the cool people. No, no, no. And it's for everybody. That would be something so awesome if you could bring this and everybody to try it out and and uh, and, and, you know, get some a lot of benefits from it, you know, because even you, you're into music, you're into entrepreneurship, all that. It's like it's only natural to kind of uh, do self-development if, if you're a high achiever person. But somebody who's not a high achiever, who doesn't, who loves just drinking beers and eating, you know, steaks in the weekends, could also really benefit a lot from this type of teaching. You know, no, definitely, definitely. I mean, I mean, you've said so many things right now. I can't even <laughs> begin uh, to say something back. Uh, but but the first one I think was was uh, around the wealth when you you know 
talked about how it doesn't really fulfill you or how it doesn't really make you happy. Um, this is something that I really noticed how I started making friends. Um, it was a while back and that already has stricken me as something that is not worth while uh, going after. Uh, I mean, obviously there's like the cliche of the musician and the artist who lives under the bridge and still plays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, yeah that's... Uh, the extreme of it, right? But I, I just remember it was my, I think, 21st or 22nd birthday. And um, there were a lot of people in my living room, like half asleep or just hanging out drunk or, or whatever. And yes. I was just like there talking, being super excited, not not really... Uh, drunk at all, but I, I just remember uh, this thing talking to the, the, the other people. You know, all these achievements. It doesn't mean anything. It's it's really empty. You know, you you want to go win that competition and then you have the prize. But what after? Or you get this diploma and you feel great, but you feel great for a week or two. And what after? Like there's always more, more, more. And I remember just like one guy across the room just looking at me like. Yeah, that's and we became friends after we became really, really good friends after. And the rest was again in 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 a, in another place. But this was something that I noticed really helped me connect with with people. And also throughout my studies, what you what you said about the self-development, I know so many people um, that you said it would be only natural to do it. But like 95 percent of those who I do know and these are musicians, so these are people who work all day on themselves, right? So they would like go on the instrument and practice the skills, but they would just practice only those skills. Very rarely something else. And 95%, I'm not really friends with them anymore. It's these 5% that I still stayed in touch with that are becoming this unbelievably amazing human beings. Um, they own... They are having their own paths and doing their own things and having their own difficulties along the way. But these are really people that I stayed connected over the years and yeah. that really developed like in the last 10 years. Amazing. It's not, almost not the same person anymore. Like they look the same. Um, they, they seem to be the same, but it's very, very different. What's yeah, that's that's the coolest when you meet an old friend and man, you you look good like it's it's always awesome like you know that feeling and yeah 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 no i, I totally can relate yeah I like with you yeah. today i think uh we met like when was it two months ago for the first time yeah yeah like, like that? yeah and uh, already today i thought like man you're you've changed <laughs> no I, I changed a lot like but like like even my wife told me like I, i'm still me but you know i don't know it's more more me more more to the like it's I, I think people think that change is bad like you're okay you're changing you're becoming somebody else but you're becoming a more you or something it's like i i don't think people actually can change in a sense that i, I cannot be in an ad for instance i can only be tudor but i can be more tudor you know if that makes sense yeah yeah so Absolutely. Change is good as long as it's authentic. You're you're wa wanting to to really explore yourself and uh, see what you're capable of and challenges. Yeah, I, I'm putting like like what you think are impossible challenges on you, and uh, yeah, that, that's how we humans shine, right? If you take somebody and through through that person on an island somewhere. Then man, that person's not gonna be like, man, I my suit is it's dirty, like fuck, I, I gotta make shelter here, you know, I gotta do this, I gotta. They they start to learn about ties, they learn about the position of the moons, the stars, the 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 resources are off the charts. They're gonna be so resourceful, and that's right. If, if you think about it, as we humans, I think a lot of people get motivated by by lack just because of that because when you lack things when you're put in situations that are almost survival like you get a lot of resources out and i i think the the tricky part is being like that but also from a place of having everything and feeling enough and uh, being abundant to not only motivate yourself by um, by removing your things or shooting yourself in the foot just for the fun of it no definitely Definitely. I mean, 
uh, one of the big lessons for me around this was uh i think five or six years ago so i went into self-development and then i learned that being in the comfort zone is really not good you you don't grow in your comfort zone right yeah. so i challenged myself all the time and i did it and and in every possible way like i would try to not sit at the same place whenever i went somewhere i was just like i want to explore or when i go to the bathroom i don't go to the same stall uh, which is like, I want to go there, but I'm like, no, I'm going to challenge myself and go to yeah, the other. Yeah, brush your teeth with your left hand and, and walking around the house with the lights closed. So it's a... Yeah, exactly. All all the stuff like that, just like keep uh, be, being in the state of growth and, and everything that's just like, don't get stale, right? And while at one hand, this is really good. On the other one, I haven't noticed that it actually brought me to a ceiling and my growth like really stumbled um, and something wasn't right, right? So I was, I remember I was smoking, uh, taking a smoke break and there was this famous singing teacher and she was uh, standing right next to me and, and she was like looking at me and, and uh, I don't know, somehow we started talking and it was about comfort zones and I was like, yeah, you know, I'm this great guy who always challenges myself to go out of my comfort zone because I want to learn things. And she, like this 65, 75 year old woman was just like looking at me like, you stupid, why do you do that? Like, <laughs> you know that you don't grow outside of your comfort zone. And I was like, what? She's like, yeah, if, if you want to grow, you're like, you grow in your comfort zone. You don't grow outside of it. And I was like, oh my God, she's so right. She is so right. If I stay in my comfort zone all the time, I will never grow. But if I'm outside of it all the time, I will also never grow. It's like the same with muscles. You stress them, but then you take the time to regenerate. And then in the regeneration, you are actually in your safe space where you can build the muscle and where you can build the strength. So you need the balance between stress and no stress to really get out. And I was like running like a dork for two or three years, just challenging myself for everything and no challenge ever worked. You know, it, it it got to a point where it was just like, everything was stressful, everything was the challenge. And then I would have these phases of just completely breaking down and trying to catch my breath and everything. So this was a very, very big takeaway for me. That's, yeah, that's so... Yeah, this this reminded me. I, I watched a Julian video, like an older one, and he draw a person and draw a line. Like this is the prison you're in, right? If you try to go outside of it, then you get adrenaline, you get self sabotage, all that. And I think what we're doing with the comfort zone is like, why 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 do we have a comfort zone first of all, right? Like challenging that assumption because if you think about it if your comfort zone is over here then you're still inside of it going everywhere but if the exactly. comfort zone is just over here you're going outside of it but you feel like shit because it's um you get all of this stress and adrenaline and stuff so i guess a lot of it is actually challenging beliefs of that comfort zone to so you have a more wide space to go on because with with, with small yeah, you remember also this thing with smoking, like I tried so hard to quit smoking, like oof, I tried it so hard, but out of my intuition, I was looking at people that aren't smoking and didn't smoke ever, right? I was thinking, man, these guys, they they don't have a problem like me, like look at me like right now, I gotta, I gotta smoke, like I feel like shit, like, but these guys, they uh, they don't have that problem, right? I was thinking, what if I never smoke? I, I would have been like them, right? And I was thinking, why not start thinking like a non-smoker instead of trying to quit smoking? And I started to think like that, behave like that, and kind of take their mindsets into me. And then it was really easy. Like, I haven't smoked since 2015, for instance, and I don't think about not smoking. And that's that was a big mind shift. Now I remember it. And I did it intuitively, so I'm pretty proud. Like nobody told me about it. <laughs> really good but stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's the rules that you have, that comfort zone. Like you, you, you create those rules that okay, this feels good, this feels bad, 
and then you do the things that feels bad and you feel proud of yourself for growing. Look, I'm going outside my comfort zone, I'm growing, but you're still punishing yourself kind of like because you're you're still putting that pressure on. So I guess not having any comfort zone. Like why why have a comfort zone? Why not just have no no zone? It's very natural, it's normal. Like you 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 can't not have it. Like for me, it's always the, the place where you feel uh, safe, right? Um, and I think it's especially interesting when learning a new skill. So this is what I try to do as much as I can, just like learn new stuff and also develop myself in, in ways where I really have this beginner's stupidity. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's really cool to, to start really things. Yeah bad at something right and and you you just have to look stupid because it's, <laughs> it's like is there no other way like you gotta look <laughs> and and i mean it's not comfortable it's not even like i couldn't but, even but why why not be why not be comfortable looking stupid why uh, not feel comfortable when you're such a beginner imagine going on a stage and doing stand-up comedy and really sucking at it and people throwing um, tomatoes and such. Because again, like they can't hurt you actually, like you just hurt yourself kind of just because you're beating yourself up because all the emotions are in you if you think about it. And you can say like, whatever, like, like this is fun. Like this, this makes for a great story, right? About the tomatoes part, definitely, yeah. Yeah, it's free food. I mean, you can catch some take home or <laughs> free food. <laughs> like, like think about it. you can you can uh, change the assumption. Like, man, these people love me so much. They give me free food and stuff. And you can even say that on stage. People start laughing, and all of a sudden, everything is kind of changing. Like, like man, this guy is such an idiot. Like, he's he's so bad at comedy that that he's actually funny and. <laughs> So, yeah, I think about it like challenging things like the assumptions. I mean, that's what all transformation master is about. Like, like, why aren't you there already? Like, why do you want to be somewhere where you're not? You want to be somewhere because you probably are there already. And you're not actually wanting to be there. You just want it to feel good being there, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, for me, it's somehow it's two different things. I don't really relate those to each other, but maybe you're right. Maybe uh, there is something there. I mean, why why do we want to be coaches? Like, it's probably because you already are, right? Because you remember on our previous talk, we talked that we were like that since a young age. Absolutely, absolutely. It, like, it's like you, you are who you are and it's it's just having that approval, you know, just like, hi, oh, it's okay to just do this thing and, and feel good about it and enjoy it. And, you know, definitely like the thing I, I told you about the 10 years ago, I, yeah, specifically, I want to help people and I want to help through facilitating. So this is, this is just like making things easier, making life easier, making everything more meaningful, more just, just better for others. And it was clear for me then, and it's clear for me now. It's just the, um, also with, with Brendan, when I talked to him, there was a great exercise where he was like, okay, so 10 years from now or five years from now, you've done all this stuff. How Brand did you do it? Yeah, Brendan has these exercises because he put me to the, through the ringer. <laughs> like he, he put me to sell uh, pineapple on pizza. Then he I was selling it and he was like, Oh, Tudor snap, the microphone sound wasn't on. Oh my God. Okay, now you got to sell people why pineapple should never be on pizza. And I just switch immediately to the other part. And it was pretty cool. Yeah, Brandon has this. I think he's in his uh, business that he built with uh, human relations and I'm not sure. Yeah, Brandon's awesome. <laughs> Great guy. He, he's a real pro, <laughs> like definitely a lot to learn from. Yeah, because he's a bit older and he has that um, more more experience under the belt, his toolkit. Yeah, but also an exceptional human being. Like, also for me, this yes. is just something that I wanted to say. Like, th this whole group has been so amazing. And uh, looking at this chart of energy levels, I don't know if you're familiar with it. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, you go from apathy to anger to no to yeah. fear to anger to to courage. Yeah, uh, exactly. So he's talking also a lot of uh, about classical music, and I've been in the classical music field for over ten years now, and he, he talks about it being very high, like below the five hundreds, and and it's really high up there. And I know a lot of classical musicians. Um, and I know a lot of world famous artists, but also like people who are just around town and um, living small lives and, and uh, doing smaller things. They are not as aware of these processes and of these things. And oftentimes, like, it wouldn't be cool to hang out with them as cool it is to hang out with you guys. Like, this is completely another level of, of things and it started making me rethink um, about how I perceive those things and how I want to go with it uh, in future because also a lot of these people were, were very skeptical of me doing it because you're so great in music why would you go do this other thing no why, I get the same with programming like you're a, you're a developer you can make a lot of money with this why do this right it's I, I, I totally yeah. get it like it, that's I don't have a choice like this is what I'm here for so I am going to do it uh, regardless I just have to figure out now how exactly and where and see what works and what doesn't so there's the whole process that is still going to happen and I hope that I will get through this process um, with you I mean, guys. It's just the first theory if you think about it I think like 2025 like, like things will be a lot different will be so advanced at this stuff We'll be flying to there. Now we're kind of newbies. Like we, we figured some stuff out, right? For ourselves, we're, uh, you know, we, we at least know a bit more <laughs> than, you know, other people that are into this, I guess. And um, yeah, and we, we also have that talent of, of really that deep intuition, like really seeing exactly what somebody needs to hear to help them move forward or have a breakthrough or. Um, spot some of their weaknesses or some of their shadows not weaknesses it's not like is right it's interesting yeah, because yeah. You thank have, you yeah thank but no uh, no you got that you got that gift like it's it's also like the wording that we use right it's you can call it a weakness you can call it whatever and i think this is also where like your experience with with marketing and with sales really shines because Ultimately, we want to also use the words that our clients use, right? So we want to speak yeah, the same language. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, because we have this copywriting experience and copywriting is all about making the client feel understood, right? Use words yeah. so they, they can relate and you, you get them, you get them, you at least have them buy in so so they, they are more open to receiving your harsh truths. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, because you, it's kind of like a Trojan horse. Like, oh, this is a nice horse, see? and then boom, all the bullshit comes out, <laughs> destroys yeah, they, everything. But sometimes you need destruction. I think about it. Sometimes us humans, we build these false facades, egos, and and personalities, all that, and a lot of it is like destroying them, like letting them burn down, so the person can be more of themselves, their more authentic selves. So it, it's it's crazy. Like, like remember, like our previous call that we we're talking about the evil. I think it, it this topic should be brought up a lot more. Like, because evil is like fire, right? It's like fire is burning, destruction, all that. But what if uh, the things that, like in nature, you have fires, right? Because you need to burn the bad bushes so that it can regrow. So I think a lot of it, like like people are are blocking the fire. The, that that's why they don't speak much. That's why willpower. It's in the stomach. It's a fire, and fire is evil. And man, I don't want to be evil. So now they're procrastinating. They don't take in action just because they don't want to, to be a bad person. If that makes sense. I don't know. That's yeah. That's that's like. Also, I think it's a lot of connection to this masculine energy and also a lot of connection to aggression, you know, like uh, these are things that are a little bit frowned upon the longer uh, we progress as society. So a lot of it, I also think for men, uh, has been the challenge to reconnect. Reown it, like really be but okay. 
Exactly, but don't be like archaic in in the way you do it, or don't be like primitive or or hurt others, because there is like this other side of it where you can really be hurtful and really be like uh, destructively aggressive, right? So you want to like balance it out, I think. Yes, having also the the heart part, right? Because when you hurt a human being and you have empathy, you feel their pain, and you're naturally not gonna hurt that person. Like also having the heart, like really feeling what others are feeling. So kind yeah. of having both. In, I, yeah. I've honestly been clipping myself for a very, very long time. Like I've honestly have had such a hard time of being myself and being who I am and also projecting my personality because of the fear that I could or would or, uh, yeah. hurt others. Um, and I have hurt others in the past and some stuff I haven't forgiven myself for a very long time, even if it is, even wasn't intentional, um, and even if I wasn't aware of it, but it was just like, oh my God, I, I have such a bad conscience because of it, or other people are talking now bad stuff about me because this happened. And then I would like go to these people after years and, and tell them, I'm so sorry that this happened. And I'm, I'm really, really... Like, what, what are you talking about? I... Exactly. So like, like what? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. So, yeah, I, I think forgiving, forgiveness is actually realizing that is nothing to forgive. Like it's, then it's done. It's like you, you should have, should have been like feeling bad about it. Uh, I guess understanding is, is like, as I said, it's it's all is is who you are. Like, how how can you be upset of something that you are? Like, it, it doesn't make sense, you know. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. No, I I mean I I hurt people and actually intentional, but intentionally in the moment and afterwards felt bad. And uh, yeah, I I did the same thing. Like, hey, remember that time that I said those things and I did those things and blah blah. Like, what, what are you talking about? I don't remember. You know, back then, I actually had to go to all the, oh, yeah, then you went there. Oh, yeah, those were fun times. Yeah, I remember that. And what the fuck, man? I, I'm trying to, to you know, dude, I'm, I, I'm trying to, he's like, what are you talking about? Like, like, no, man, I feel real bad about those things. About what things? And it's like, fuck, man. It's like, okay, never mind. Let's talk about the good things. And it just... I guess just that intention of going to that person. At least we we had some memories about those school times because that person remembered the good times, and I only remember like how how I I messed up. And uh, it's uh, yeah, I should have just remembered the good times as well. And it tells a lot about ourselves, right? And and where our energy focuses on. Yeah. So why, why, why is all of that happening? Like I have had it so often, you know, just hanging around and being miserable or looking at. No, the... it's it's my theory from from morals and ethics. Those are the strongest things. Like it's it's your morals. Like like you have rules of what's right and what's wrong, and you broke those, and now you feel bad. But if you change your morals like whatever it's but i and uh, it's a bit scary because you don't want to become the villain right you you fear that if you change your morals you might uh, now start doing even worse things and you might go down a path of because you see this in movies right the mm -hmm. person that becomes the bad guy and stuff but um it doesn't happen like i think a lot of it the, the fear of letting go of just uh, just feeling that things are going to get really worse, like it's going to be hell. You're going to do all the bad things and then you're going to suffer even more. But these morals, as I said, is, is like you build them up as you grow from from parents, from TV and uh, like questioning them, like, you know, TV, like, let's be honest, we, we watched not much TV and all of it is kind of negative. That's why I don't watch Netflix anymore and stuff. I watch podcasts like I, I try to find people that that have a more positive view on things and uh, that's why I love everybody in the group is pretty amazing think about it yeah it's so much positivity 
but it's exactly like who you surround yourself with um you become like more more like them right i know maybe it was just for me with morals and ethics but i i kept so strong of them even though it was hurting people like for instance oh i had this thing that you know making money is bad all that and i, I completely uh, agree on that one by the way uh, around the morals and ethics and this is just what i wanted to mention money so please continue this is a big one so it's interesting right because okay i i'm such a good person because i don't make money because making money is stealing money right you you are paid only what you're worth if if you you know your parents made ten dollars an hour that's your worth and if you make a hundred dollars an hour now you're stealing ninety dollars right and um then you don't have money and 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 you're pretty stressed right because you gotta pay bills you you can buy your wife stuff if you have a wife or kids or others depend on you and now you're in a really fucked up place because now you have your morals screaming at you no don't 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 make money don't, don't you know it's it's bad man i mean you want to become evil or something at least you're a good person you can sleep at night and then you have the other side which is actual reality where you need to put food on the table and and people you're letting people down and now you have double pain about these things like at least for me that, that that's how it was and having so much fear like if i break my morals then what's gonna happen like who am I going to be? And, uh, you know, I, I might become somebody that's evil, right? Yeah. But those are beliefs, are, are beliefs that I formed uh, as a child. And and uh, I guess the courage to go there was, was so hard. Like, you have so much resistance. Like, even when you start remembering some things about how you formed all of this, then your mind, boom, is, it kind of throws you out of there. Like if you saw the movie Inception, you suddenly end up in a different part of your subconscious. Mm -hmm. and it, it's like, um, yeah, it's a real challenge. And and, and yeah, because we... Definitely, we, like for me, it was uh, when I started analyzing this, it's, it's still a process around money uh th there's like this triggering story i just recently read i don't know if i if i send it to you no the yeah I, I yeah <laughs> i was actually in traveling there there and i read that and with the guy you want to yeah. tell it or, or should i tell it uh, yeah story? please please do so yeah Nada sent me a story said man this story is triggering trigger warning you're gonna get triggered okay okay send it over let's see where it goes and um yeah, so it was the story about this young person that went to an event, right? Just a standard event, like everybody was waiting outside the room. The person was sort of famous, like a thousand people in an uh, amphitheater. And then the guy shows up on the stage. He's like an old man, all that, all nicely dressed, all confident, cocky, you know, back straight. Pulls out his wallet, sticks out a bunch of euros or dollars, <laughs> and who cares? And he starts smelling it. and man i love this money this money is so freaking awesome okay cool and you know kind of almost like tasting it licking it like doing all that like oh i love the money <laughs> you know the, <laughs> like how you see in movies and uh, the person that was narrating the young person was telling the story in the story that the told me and uh, inside his brain he was like man this guy's full of himself oh my god what an asshole what can i learn from this person he's not even spiritual and then uh, the person on the stage started speaking now guys if some of you right now had judgments about me and you thought that what an asshole i am because i will, of course <laughs> then uh, what if i brought on a stage my nephew and kissed him on the forehead and said, I love my nephew, he's the best person ever, he's so cool, all that. I love him very much. And all of you wouldn't have a judgment about me. You would say, man, this person is awesome. Well, guess what? This thing over here is the symbol of your freedom and you're disgusted by it. Think about that. Because that's what money is. It's like, it doesn't have any power, actually. It's like, did you know that in the United States, like 80 trillion USD dollars, and by the way, we are in Europe, like I, I don't know how much there are in Switzerland or Romania. There's no. so much money out there. And uh, of course, money never goes to people that hate it. 
or think it's bad, they will do everything to avoid it and make sure they never get it. Yeah, and that's the spiritual aspect of it. And it, yeah, yeah, and like you, you can be spiritual and have money because you can donate that money or you can build stuff or whatever. Like money helps people move and connect. Like people get each other, they go to work, they work with people that they don't like and eventually start yeah. liking and becoming friends. Wouldn't happen, right? If money wasn't involved like it, it gets people moving it's it's not necessarily a good or bad thing it's just that how we are taught and uh, yeah, the morals like, around it it's like a tool i think i say the same with tools you can use tools for good and you can use tools for bad it's neutral in and of itself you can say the same about the internet you can use it for good you can use it for bad you can use a knife for good or for bad um you can it all goes down to, to stories like we had so many stories told in movies from schools about money. We didn't have that many stories about hammers. Imagine like all your childhood, you hear <laughs> that hammers are going to kill you in your sleep. And she like, like, if you take one in your hand, your hand's going to fall off. Your family is going to die. You're going to burn in hell. Now, when you see the hammer, you, you, you don't want to pick it up. Like <laughs> maybe it's true. Maybe all the stories are true. Who knows? Yeah. And you have this such a fear about it. It, it gets it gets scary. I I have another component there. I remember really well when growing up um, that there was a lot of well. I grew up during wartime, right? So there was very little food. Uh, there was very little resources. Everything was super scarce. So this was like supercharged all of this scarcity mindset. I remember uh, my grandfather having to smuggle in cigarettes uh, from Bulgaria. I think just to be able. Um, to, to pay for the food uh, that we would eat all as a family. And uh, th these were really hard times. And I really remember my parents also when later we moved to Switzerland. Then you sometimes, if you want to have like a water in the train and you want to pay for that water, what would usually cost to around one euro if you buy it in the, um, in the shop, you would have to pay five or six euros in the train. Yeah, yeah, which, which was stealing, basically, right? Uh, that, that that was the label that was the put. Label, yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And you think that that person's a bad person because yeah, they you're, you're selling you. like the same thing uh, for much more. So you're like making a profit. You're you're forcing people to pay for but, it. But and there was, the parents told you these things, right? Or and the yeah, family. yeah, yeah. And there yeah, was no, imagine no, if your parents were you. the bottle sellers. Like if your parents were selling mm -hmm. those bottles. They're saying, look how good we're doing. The people can drink water. We're making a profit. We can feed our family. We donated that much to the church. Because think about it. You're not paying five euro for the water. You're paying it for the luxury of having it on the train right there in your seat. So of course, it's more expensive. Like Because that person who's selling you the water, he still has to you know, bring it on, do the service, give it to you, all that. And the... Uh, it's it, exactly. it's so interesting because I'm thinking of these things right now, but I wasn't thinking like that. I'm I'm telling you, my parents told me the same shit. Like mm -hmm. that that person stealing, that's not cool, all that. So you you get this conditioning really hardwired there. And yeah, but the, sorry the for best part around it is right. You don't even have to buy that water. You're complaining about a person is selling something and so many are, are buying from them right but yeah, exactly buy from them and you're you're telling them you are stealing right <laughs> so, yeah and you're not doing anything like like you're not even paying for the water and yeah, yeah. i mean you, you can bring your free water or almost free from home right nobody forces you to not do that uh, okay with the planes they force you so uh that th that could be some some other thing to argue but you can still fill it up in the in the bathrooms on the airport but Actually, like just just the, the the thought of it, and I think the value that people think that uh, bottled water has this kind of value, and I I don't want to pay any more or any less. And I've noticed it's not just my parents; it's so many people that have this belief. And and uh, when they buy something like that, they just kind of turn a blind eye. Uh, especially you also know with the profits, right? So. 
you would have people who go in the supermarket and read every little label and like buy the cheapest stuff. But then when they have to like buy the, the BMW or they go and buy the car, it doesn't matter if it's like 5,000 more or 10,000 more. I have a good feeling about this, right? The feeling about this, that's... that's yeah, and, like, and then, yeah, then think about it. Like with this 10,000, how much in the supermarket could you like buy extra or not look at the price or they're trying to saving these small savings and it's just about the mindset it's just about the the I, it's, I need yeah it's definitely the mindset it's so true like you're you're basically stealing the supermarket or something right because that profit they they take home to their family like you don't think about it like when you pay extra for something that extra money goes to that person's profit to feed their family. So, yeah. you know, you, you, the people don't think that and and they don't think it because they learn it from parents. Because even you on the train, then I'm sure you went home and you when you sit on you before going to sleep, you're thinking about your, your parents and the, yeah, yeah, those guys are stealing motherfuckers. And you, you kind of start forming all of these beliefs and you don't even question them. And it's. Yeah. And I I mean, everything that's going on right now with the economy, I'm pretty sure governments fucked up back in 2020. Like I can really tell the the break. Uh, I don't want to go too much into politics right now, but just like I felt it also in my industry, like with music, there was an abundance mindset before and now it's a scarcity mindset. Yeah, and it's, it's just like like. What, how was a hundred years ago that people were thinking that everything scares and if people think things are scarce they're not spending and if they're not spending the money doesn't circulate and the economy goes it's just because they think that we don't have resources and and, and it's crazy because that started happening and uh the first reactions was also like consumer reactions how much was bought how much was spent and yeah because it's all interconnected yep. it, yeah yeah everything's like i i see your image behind you like with those mountains now imagine how many buildings can you build out of that fucking mountain it's like it's infinite man the resources we have resources not like but yeah yeah it's yeah. definitely mindset no, it's it's changed a lot, and I think we're still in this mindset from uh, the COVID pandemic. And now we have the war on top of it, and everything like what we are doing, people really need it. Um, it's also like what Julian said: the world is in dire need of exactly this uh, type of stuff because we we have had so much media, so much politicians, everyone doing like the same Canaan. Um, that were also like really, really negative mindsets and negative words and everything is scarce and fear. Uh, I, I had this idea with the AI stuff. Like right now, AI answers, people put answers and articles on Google, on Quora, all that. Soon they're going to do deep fakes. And at some point, people are going to be like, fuck this, like everything on the internet is fake mm -hmm. and they won't use it anymore. And it's kind of going to be the death of journalism and um, news and stuff like people at some point, they're just going to be fucking man. I, I'm just going to focus on my local area and, and do business with people around in person and all, all that. Th that's the thing I'm thinking. What do you think about that? Like, because I do agree, I agree. Like at some point it is going to go so far that people are just going to snap in the other direction, just like with TV, like you had so much propaganda. And then in the early 2000s, the internet appeared and people wanted that, wanted a, a place to really express themselves. But now the internet is going the other direction. That's all fake and it's all, it's messed up. And people want to go back to the realness and the connection and, and, and meeting people and stuff like. Yeah, like, I think uh, this is exactly like the the beauty of it, that, that it's going. I was thinking about all the development and the revolutions we have, right? So we have this uh, agricultural revolution where we suddenly were able to have like specific jobs. Not everyone has to do like food gathering or, or, or hunting or whatever, but you can like, someone works the field, someone is like the blacksmith, someone yeah. does the clothing. And we built this complex civilizations and then 
we get to the industrial revolution where we even have these manufacturers just get into factories, right? And so the machines are doing stuff for people, which enabled us to go to the information age um, and the digital age. And right now we have the AI even like taking all the knowledge and all this information stuff, like the easy one, and doing it for us. So like, what's the next step? Also, when we're thinking about the energy uh, scale, right? We moved from the Middle Ages into this neutrality. Then we moved into the the business of the 300s. Then we moved into the knowledge state of the 400s. And yeah. now that we yeah. have all that figured out, what's next? Like, it's probably connection, love, spirituality, arts. I think this is like the next big thing. Yeah, exactly, because that's what's left, right? Because if machines handle our survival, th that's why you use them, right? Handles yeah. everything. Because even, um, you know, mental white collar jobs, right? Like lawyers or program or whatever, those are going to be able to be done by machines with AI. So then what's left is just the soul, like, um, like um, letting go of everything, like nature and stuff, I think. Because we kind of, like, like I think for us humans, our problem was like, it's pretty hard to survive in nature. And we figure out, okay, we hunt, we build sticks, we, we get leverage, right? We just, yeah. instead of hitting the fucking deer in the head and eating it, it's much easier to, to kill it with a stick, right? And then we figure out, okay, maybe if we don't hunt all day, let's get their cubs, their babies, put a fence around them and they grow up and we can just get them from there. We don't need to go to the woods, right? And then agriculture started, right? And let's build our own houses and then let's use machine to farm all of this. Oh man, now we gotta think, we gotta use our brains, we gotta read, we gotta do research. Let's make computers do that, right? And then what's left, right? I mean, we, we, we end up just doing everything we enjoy, like just spending time in nature, painting, music, like things people will do just for the enjoyment, not for survival, right? A lot of life yeah. is just to survive. Like you do the job, you learn the profession and become an athlete just so you can make a lot of money so you can survive better. But uh, it's going to be more in, for enjoyment, for happiness, for, for the connection and stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for what life is actually worth living for, right? And it's not just try to make it through the or, day and tomorrow yeah for what you are kind of born to live as a as a child you're kind of born to just enjoy and paint and and do like when a child paints something it's it's bad it's shit but since uh, there there isn't a need for it right because hey, i can build whatever it's pretty cool like you can just do stuff without having the pressure of of um Right, because like you, you paint something, parents see it, okay, mm -hmm. maybe he's a painter. They, they always think like what profession he's going to be, right? Not that he's, look, he's just enjoying himself, that's cool. Like it's always about becoming something and, and uh, making a living for yourself and survival, survival, survival. Definitely. And I saw this TikTok a few days ago, which was super interesting about um, how schools actually uh, make children conform to, to a different standard. So they took like this definition of a genius and then they tested like five-year-olds and they checked out that I think 98% of five-year-olds checked out to be like genius per definition. And then they retested these kids five years later and then it was just only 60% of them. And then five years later, it was like 20% of them. And uh, I think when they were 20 or 25, they re like one guy retested again, it was only 2% that still remained at this definition of genius, like it's something to do with creativity and creative thinking and uh, like yeah, doing yeah. puzzles and stuff like that um, in, in a way that's not like normal, so to speak, that can be inventive. So apparently we have this whole system that was put in place to make us into sheep or clip the eagles, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, so, it, yeah, right. the, the, it's yeah, it's the farm mentality. It's exactly that, right? Because the cow doesn't need to do stuff. It just needs to eat the grass and then die. So you can eat. So it's the same with humans. Like they just need to go in school, then go in the factory and work the industrial stuff, right? 
And then yeah. uh, now it's kind of they need to learn programming, they need to learn uh, lawyers, all that, so they can do all of that, right? So it's like uh, the people that have all, it's probably that's why people think money is bad, like people treat people like farm animals, <laughs> like you have the factory, they're, they're just resources, that human resources, right? Because, but once you have like machines that can do that, it's like, cause right now it's a lot cheaper to have a person work something, right? Like even now I was walking here and I saw these guys, they brought them from Asia to work, work the railroads. And they're they're just like biological machines to them. It's it's uh, it's how it is, you know. It's um, it's not necessarily that's a bad thing. The bad thing is that person thinks of himself like that, right? Like mm -hmm. it's whatever we we do our work. But I think more the the sad part is like the person forgetting that he's a person, not a machine, like. It's that, really somehow it, it hurts to witness that, right? Or just to even see it and uh, notice that people are aren't necessarily treated as people. I don't yeah. know. I find it to be extremely hurtful. Just just like witnessing this, it it makes um, it it really makes something inside of me happen. Um, it's probably a mixture of of negative emotions. I would say. Yeah, it's that. That's why I said it. <laughs> so, so you can um, all of it, uh, as I said, a lot of it. It's it's actually looking at things like at the bad things. It's not necessarily bad. It's it's a bit sad, but it's also kind of cool because they're actually having fun at some point. I was going there, you know, they're just enjoying mm -hmm. themselves, like. And uh, actually talk with them. I say, hey guys, just check out the city. It's pretty cool. No, no, you gotta work here. I mean, you you have some free time because they said they were like ten hours, and it's still a lot. But still, you you can still visit the place. And it's all about the what makes me sad. It's um, their beliefs. They they really believe that they can go anywhere. They will get fired, whatever. And uh, just believing that they have their own <laughs> mental prisons, right? Yeah. And think about it, like, like like nobody's actually forcing them to do that. They could just yeah. say fuck you and just go in the city and exactly. And, and they just, it's, it's their responsibility, right? Yeah, yeah. If a person came to me, say, hey, Tudor, look, I don't want to work those railroads. I haven't told anybody. Let me stay here. Let me figure some stuff out. And I actually did. I, I was when I was in the United States. I made friends like that, like other people that were more kind of set set there. And they helped me out to figure out things. And it's just because I, I was willing to open my mind. I, I, I think the sad thing is people, their beliefs, it's it's all about, they, they really believe that that's their life and all that. And it, I think it comes down to that punishment reward system. Like probably the person say, no, you got to go there, work, bring us money home, or else we don't love you, you're, you're, you're garbage, you know? So I, 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 it's probably that's why it made you sad because you probably had like parents that told you like you're not worthy. It's something of self worth. Like you, you feel like it's like you know it's like people not treating people as human beings. But mm -hmm. that's, that's not the problem. Like somebody who treats another human being like a machine, they also treat themselves as a machine. Yeah. So it's not that the problem. It's the problem the person that's being treated like that that they don't um, allow themselves to feel human again. Yeah, definitely. And and it's a lot of this conditioning built into it, right? It's a lot of brainwashing, uh, I like to call it, even if it's a, like a really harsh term, but it's, it's just like making people so disconnected from themselves that they let these things happen to them. And this is what well, I really it think. will pass like as as people they you know when they went to wars and such like they put their body for their country and now we kind of put our mind and our soul to to but probably in the future people say enough is enough like fuck you guys like you you ain't fooling me like right now it's just because we, we're not that sophisticated that, that's why companies can fool you or, or or you know it's that's the idea right and, and you can also like do it on your own terms. You can like say, okay, this is 
maybe the other party is taking greater advantage of me than I'm taking of them, but I'm still getting something out of it, so I will do it. So it's yeah, still- yeah, so, yeah, being aware of it, like even if you know, like when I watch YouTube, I, I know I'm getting dopamines, I'm, I'm doing it for the dopamines, I don't feel bad about it. I actually kind of admire the sophistication of some marketing campaigns or all that. And it's, I, I think people, yeah, with, with this transformation and this coaching and everything is like that awareness. If you can equip people with being more aware of things, then they don't have that much of an effect. Like even with the Corona and I don't want to talk politics again. Yeah. It's like it's like if you don't believe it and you don't get scared, whatever, it's pretty cool. You you can actually go outside. There's not many people out. You can go into nature. Mm-hmm. It's like you can. Is is like the, I realized that that look, man. It, before like people were coming to your house and taking you by force with guns, but now they're kind of taking you by force with media. And if you learn to be immune to that, the world is pretty cool. Cause like there wasn't any army or putting guns on me because i'm going outside and maybe 50 years ago there wasn't the case so i could still go outside do whatever i want is that's yeah you know. yeah and I, I mean ultimately like what you describe um maybe like the final goal of of it all would be like connecting like true connection to others true connection to the world true connection to like not being this isolated self yeah yeah exactly. from yourself but like just maybe spread the eagle's wings or or yeah just like get in touch with everything yeah it's connecting with others get to connect more with yourself and connecting more with yourself get to connect with others these things feed on each other so yeah right what would like your your advice be to me, let's say um, I'm a young person, not sure where I want to go, or I'm not so sure of myself. What would like your advice be to me um, in regards of connection? Well, not being sure, I, I would say just don't just be OK with it. Like, don't feel even bad that you're not unsure, because when you're even older, you're, you're still going to feel the same. You're still going to feel unsure. It's like just don't at least don't fool yourself that at some point you'll have things figured out you want. It's like and things that's, are never figured out. There's there's no um hundred percent certainty in anything. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And the people that can emulate certainty, especially in sales and marketing, a lot of it is actually being certain. Like see this stick over here? This has 10 gigabytes and will never break, has a hundred years old span, is the best stick ever, cost a thousand dollars. And if I say, yeah, I mean, this stick, it, it has like a hundred gigabytes on it, and it's really good, like, like uh, you can use it for a hundred years, it's a thousand dollars, so it's a difference, right? It's just, it's like people realize that people are lying to you, like really, literally, and uh, just by the certainty of it, and they're actually, as as we humans, we don't feel certain about things. We think that others are, right? Like the experts or um, that's how cults even begin. Like you have this, this guy that thinks that he's so confident and everybody wants a piece of that. And that, that's why people follow people. Like you see athletes, all that, all confident. I can tell you they don't have things figured out. They It's their business to, to gather you so just just know that I, I mean it's okay to follow people but yeah certainty you, you you'll never have it figured out you can pretend to be certain and uh, practice it and convince others that you know what you're talking about and get others <laughs> to follow you but it's it's fine you know it's fine to not be certain Th- so- that's a great duality that you talk about so on the one hand like I think also when you have the growth mindset, you can never really be certain, right? Um, but then when you interact with the outer world and you want to provide value and you want to give yourself, you need to project certainty. Um, like th- there's a 
third shade of it for example narcissists when you like see pathological narcissists they can't do anything else right they they're only projecting themselves and only doing this certainty and it's really on on a, a very very scary pedestal like it, it could break kind of easily and then they get into rage and whatever um, yeah, yeah. happens there but i mean the the really uh, important thing that you describe here is you have the growth mindset behind where you're always trying out new perspectives right and you're always testing out things and there's no certainty because there is none if you, ultimately if you look at things um everything is relative you can everything yeah and it's changing like less changing that's yeah relativity change like if you think of atoms like the electrons they're always spinning like nothing stays still in this universe everything's in constant movement and uh, you can be certain about being uncertain and that's a mind twist like if you feel uncertain be certain of it <laughs> like i'm really certain about this stuff and that creates such such a strong magnetic pull. It's like meta, meta certain. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. I've I've been using it a couple of times, but not always to a very good. I'm still testing it out. But uh, like for example, when I'm uh, conducting a choir, they yeah. can immediately tell if I'm not certain about something. They they they're. I can tell by the shift in their bodies and 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 like the, yeah, they're kind of like yeah i know yeah whatever yes. yeah what, what what is this guy doing like why should i listen to him and i've i've seen so many uh other uh people who are also doing conducting and they say things that are complete nonsense but they just say it in a way that is so certain that everybody is like yeah this is this is how we're going to do it uh and also this is i think a very interesting point to to um to say that it's not about the what, it's not about the content, uh, but it's about how it connects to people. This is how you get them to react. This is how you get um, the ear. This is how you can convey your message when you have like this certainty, when you have the authority that you project. And I've seen so many people like also for social media, they have such great content, but they just don't present it in a way yeah. that's really enticing or that makes me want to listen or that just this hook. Um, yeah, because if you break it down, bad. like like uh, somebody has to spend time, energy to listen to you or read your stuff or whatever content is, and they, they got to decide first, is this worth my time or not? And in that split second, that first impression, like, like man, this guy, yeah, 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 he he might be onto something. Let let's 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 listen, well, right? Because the the yeah, let, let's do a test. So, like if anyone listens up until this point, just put a thumbs up below the video, so we know that you okay. actually have listened and you won the prize of hey man, I'm interested and I really want to connect and see what's going on. Yeah, it's pretty crazy because we are the two of us right now. We are recording. But if you imagine, like, let's say this video gets a thousand people watching, it's like we have a thousand people around us right now listening. And and uh, to those people, I, I want to say, and to everybody, because not everybody is listening, but the ones that are listening, is like you're investing your most valuable asset, your time. And uh, two things. First of all, thank you for that. Thank you for helping our brand. But secondly, what are you doing? I mean, go build your own stuff. Like, don't listen to others. Like, go go do your thing. You know, get others to listen to you. Seriously, like, you know, like, like, because I I know me myself. I listen to a lot of things, and uh, watch things, and uh, yeah, it's cool. But it's more fun doing it, to be honest. <laughs> so, <laughs> start your own thing. It's okay. You, you don't need to publish them. You can have them unlisted or something. But yeah, you can reach out to anybody like, hey, let's do a call or something. Just like how it's like, it's, it's not a big deal and it helps a lot. It's it's a lot cheaper than going to a therapist. It's, <laughs> it's <free. laughs> yeah, do, do. And you get a lot more value. I can tell you that from 
from Nenad. <laughs> doing, doing cell therapy. That said, I am not a medical professional and I do encourage take, take everyone. Take any advice with a grain of salt and uh, yeah. we're just some two dudes, like nothing should be taken as advice. It's for educational purpose, yeah, for entertaining purposes. Yeah, purposes only. Yeah, and it's on YouTube. I mean, this is an entertainment platform or what platform are we on? Definitely. So. Like the things that we talk about, they, they can really help a lot. But I think anyone who truly uh, feels like I need help, just go and seek professional help. This is like the first and foremost thing that you want to do. That being said, I would like to uh, conclude our talk with uh, how we started out. And it was like the, the main takeaway. And I, I really want to ask you, like Tudor, how did you feel this connection when you, when you came into the group? What made you say like, these people are like me? How, how, how did that? I, I didn't, I actually didn't want to do it at first. Like, I, um, you know, I, I passed, I, I, I passed all of the stages I got in. I was like, man, this is stupid. Like, I don't want to do this. Look at these guys all positive <laughs> and stuff. Like, these guys are idiots. Like, they're probably broke. Like, I had all these judgments. <laughs> like, like seriously. Like, but, I had. Seriously, what did you think? That that everyone there is broke? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. Like, they're all into spiritual stuff. They, they, they're not. They don't care about making money. All that. Mm -hmm. Like, like seriously. Those, those are things I was thinking. And um, I actually wrote the support team to give me a refund. I don't have time to do this. I have other things to do. It will just be a distraction. I actually, I can show you the email, by the way. I, I, I have it. And they didn't reply like, God damn it. Now, <laughs> if, I, if I pay the money, okay, let me at least do it. So I don't feel like the, that I, I'm completely honest. That, that's how it was. And the first picture I put was actually one of my business pictures in my suit. And then Alexander, or I don't know who, deleted it. And um, I was even more angry, like, what the fuck? And uh, <laughs> then, um, you know, then Julian put out the content. It was the group first, then the content, right? And then I saw Julian after so much time, after I think four years since I did the first Transformation Mastery. Yeah. And uh, he, he, he really said that thing in the first videos, like what else is there out there than to help people like? And um, he really reminded me like, yeah, man, I, I used to want to help people and stuff. <laughs> and uh, let me just do it like as a hobby and stuff. And, uh, you know, I let go of my ego and put the first picture. If you look at it on the group, you, you can see I'm still kind of like a bit um, awkward. Like, you know, I didn't want to do it. Like, had a lot of resistance. What happened to the to the first picture? Like, you were in a suit and or like James Bond or what did you do? No, I, I, I already had that picture. I didn't take it for the, for the yeah, face. Yeah, but, but you just posted it in the group and then it got deleted. Yeah, yeah. It's I, I think if you look on my Facebook, because I have a few more there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was just like the professional picture I have for because I was doing uh, consulting back then. Yeah. And doing a bit of sales. I, I started that company to sell industrial solar panels, all that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was kind of in that mindset a bit, you know. And uh, yeah, if if you're an entrepreneur or whatever, if you're on on money hungry, like if you. <laughs> Yeah, you should definitely. It's it's a clear sign that the the place you have so much resistance about it. It's a thing that you you gotta do. It's like even if it takes days, weeks of self battle to get yourself to do it. Eventually, you'll do it and you'll feel good. And you know, it's so yeah. That's the story. Like honestly, like and and even with this this thing, like I'm not I'm not sure how qualified I am at self development. Right? I know these things intuitively. Like I, I know if I talk with somebody, I, I they get value from me, you know. Like I, I'll I'll pull out their um, their stuff. Like I can just see it intuitively. But I'm no expert. Like there are some terminologies about self development, about stuff that I just don't know. And even for the exam now, I, I gotta train and relearn the materials. 
and I still have some resistance. Like, God damn, I don't want to be a self-development nerd and <laughs> learn all of this stuff, you know? <laughs> so yeah, that's, I, I hope that me being honest really helps people. I, I think the most value is like, like if somebody were to check my first videos from 2016, like so awkward I was, and now the, you see that, that you it gives you hope that with self-development, you, you can really develop a bit. Like you can really, no, it definitely. Really works. Yeah, definitely. it really works and, and it takes time a bit and yeah. And I've seen them and you're really a different person. Like you, you've changed, man. And, and there's just something else in your voice and how you present yourself and how you talk. Um, and also, I, I think it's great that you're so honest about these things. I think um, I really should should do this this uh, round table, the hashtag no filter round table, just like. No, no, it's definitely awesome to really to just... connect with with each other, you know, just in this way where it's so. Yeah, let's let's. Yeah, it's personal. It's really personal. And I really have the feeling that I get to know you and I hope that others get to know you through this as well. Um, yeah, and hopefully if if I pass my certification and people can see this, like as they people do research, they say, oh, look, like it's, it's just like me. And I, I don't want to be like an expert, to be honest. I just want to be like together, like with everybody. And even for the event, like, you know, just I, I'm more excited about meeting new people, to be honest, to get out of the house and meet people. And it's pretty awesome that that people invest in themselves, like seriously. Like, even with that, I had so much resistance. <laughs> like with Julian's course, like here's here's the cool story with it. I actually uh, pirated it. I didn't pay for it. I took it and then I paid for it. And it was like my last $300 back then. <laughs> I said, man, it's only fair to pay for the course. I, and I think it was the first course I actually put money for because others I was just taking from online. Yeah. But this one and uh, now at this point this year, I sent $4,000 to Jordan Belfort's course just because it's fair because else the value that he gave me, I feel like I kind of stole it. And it's only fair and that 4,000, it doesn't go to him. It kind of goes to me. It's like an investment in myself. So I, that's another big thing. Hey, that good, I stuff. good stuff for stepping up, man. Yeah. And imagine if I wouldn't um, paid the course because I was in the call to sign up for the, the Smash Mastery and OK, cool. All that. What's your email account to upgrade your stuff, right? And uh, then what would I say? Like, no, I actually I don't have account with you guys. <laughs> it's like, you know, because I was telling this person that I was doing the, the sales call to get. Ah, yeah, 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 I get Same. it. I get it. Yeah, because I told him, look, I do. I did the Julian stuff 2019, blah, blah, blah. It's so cool. And then they asked me, OK, what's your email account? And so what you you haven't paid for it <laughs> like <laughs> you motherfucker <laughs> you would, like i wouldn't probably got in right and i wouldn't met you and all that and just that decision was such a gut decision those 300 dollars was a lot of money for me back then and i just put it out and now i'm here with you i would have been here and had had this call and uh because i remember my friend back then i told him he said, you're stupid. Why did you give money to Julian? He has a lot of money. He didn't need your money, like all that. Because he, me and him, we were kind of in the self-development. And he's kind of like, uh, didn't evolve as much because he didn't took chances, right? He didn't bet as much on himself. He was thinking everything's a scam, all that. And um, yeah, that, that's the whole story. I That's the whole full transparent story. It's not the prettiest one, but hopefully it's like, um, you know, I, I hope people that that do bad things, like I, I shouldn't take the course for free. I should have paid for it from the start. And But I hope people that do bad things realize that you're not a bad person. You just do bad things. It's a different, you're, you're still a, a great person. You're still a good person inside, even if you do bad things. Yeah, yeah. The things you do is not who you are. Just remember that. Yeah, that's a cool, cool way to end it. <laughs> Definitely. 
Tudor, thank you so much for everything, for your honesty, for your opening up. It's been wonderful. Um, I feel very privileged right now. So thank you so much for letting me meet you. And, and thank you for being such an awesome guide. I mean, you, you have a way of letting people just open up. And I, I think people will get so much value from, from working with you or training or coaching. And it's only the beginning. You're, you're just in your 30s. Imagine when you're in your 40s, 50s, when you have 20 years of this under your belt. I mean, you know. Thanks, man. I, I don't know. I will go wherever it takes me, whatever is needed. Um, I don't have many expectations. I'm just trying to offer whatever I can out there and whatever's being received, I will try to put more into there. But just for, like right now, I try to put it all out there. And thank you so yeah, much. And enjoy it. Like, yeah, I, yeah I, I can tell that you're really enjoying it. And you, you definitely like it takes your place like having fun doing it. Thanks, man. Thanks a lot for, for this call. Honestly, thank, thank you. you. We have also so many other ideas to discuss that we can do afterwards or some other time. Yeah, but we it, can talk more business stuff. But yeah, I, I, I love that we, we, we managed to get more of the personal development stuff. Just great stuff. Great stuff, man. Great Tudor. stuff. Thanks so much. And uh, see you in the group. Yeah, man. Talk soon. All right.